marched with Martin Luther King and others um, in the early days and even before. Um, and then at the, there was a time of a lot of backlash in uh, mostly I think it started when there was affirmative action and all of a sudden Jews like other white people may have felt that they were being jobs that we white privileged people should get. Um, and uh, so our synagogue and uh, a lot of synagogues today in New Hampshire, as I, I can tell, don't really deal with race and racial issues that much in part because we don't have many uh, people of color in our except for adopted uh, children of uh, congregants, of which there are quite a few. Um, but uh, also, there's, I don't know, there's maybe a fear of opening up the discussion and uh, I, um, or of alienating the people who are anti-affirmative action from the people who are um, anti-racist. Um, but I think that um, the uh, Kate's idea of acknowledging our own complicity is absolutely essential, just like all white people, um, people in Jewish uh, congregations should have, have to recognize this as well. And uh, the uh, friendly amendment that I would add to and uh, James's point about um, examining what we're doing within our own faith groups is I would examine and acknowledge it in the context of the greater community, the greater country, the greater history, that 400 years of slavery and 100 years of de facto uh, discrimination and 50 years of uh, implicit and structural uh, racial discrimination. And, and I think in that context, um, all uh, congregations, Jewish and otherwise, um, should, in addition to addressing our own concerns, and perhaps as case after addressing our own concerns, but time factor, um, should be out there taking a leadership role in uh, helping the greater community to overcome racism, to take a stand when uh, that man at Merrimack Valley takes a knee and is uh, ostracized and not protected by uh, the school to take a stand and maybe the Interfaith Council should be leading civil rights marches when those two uh, teenage boys were um, accosted in, in the jewelry store on Main Street in Congress. Um, or, you know, have some kind of demonstration that, you know, not an we're not going to tolerate racism anywhere in our community. And churches and synagogues are the place that can get out there and take that high moral ground and, and lead folks uh, to, uh, to doing something about it. Make a statement that captures the Fox News and um, President of the United States are kind of, uh, oh well, probably a lot of good people out there who are doing horrible things. So uh, thank you for being part of that. I mean, like James said, we could be here all day. Uh, but I'm going to turn it back over to Carlos for our uh, closing. And thank you for being here, and thank you for engaging. So on the, um, the table in the little packets at the bottom, it says that uh, racism, like sexism, homophobia, ageism, and all of the other things that we use to separate us is a symptom. And We've identified it a little bit. It's a symptom of forgetting to live the golden rule, which we understand from our various faith traditions, and we have different ways that we go to them. I share this. Uh, Ruby Carr says, to hate is a easy, lazy thing. Love takes strength. Everyone has, but not all are willing to practice. We, as people of faith, whatever faith tradition we come from, must be willing to not take the easy, lazy way, but
but instead to exercise the strength of love that our Creator, by whatever name we may refer to, has endowed us with. We are all connected. We, can, we have a choice before us every day. It can be the easy way. And we see where that has gotten us. Or to imagine what we could do to let the strength of our love build us into something new. So are you ready to not take the easy, lazy way out? Are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then we want to hear from you. We don't want this to be a conversation that we do once and done. This is a conversation we need to revisit over and over again. And so if you are willing to be a part of the ongoing conversation, we invite you to fill out the form that's on the table. Let us know how to get in touch with you so that we can invite you, that we can make sure that you are part of the conversation, that the strength of your love is part of the narrative that needs to unfold. I thank each of our panelists for sharing. Add one addendum on your, you're putting out the, I want to keep talking. If you uh, would like a link to the videos, because there was a lot of information in there and it wasn't always easy to follow here. If you'd like a link to those videos, indicate that and I will make sure that you get the link to those videos so you can watch them and really like them on your own. Any last words? <laughs> I get the last word. Ooh. Thank you all for being here. So some of you who know me know that I practice FIBO. Breathe in and breathe out. We're called to breathe. And sometimes when things get tense, we hold our breath. And when we hold our breath, we're not giving enough oxygen to the places that we need to have them. So I invite us to breathe in the love of the divine and to breathe out our hope for what we are called to do. So a nice deep breath in of the divine love. And breathe out your hope. I offer this prayer. O oh God, all names of all knowing just beyond our grasp. Be with us in this sacred work of reminding ourselves and one another that we are your children, that we are brothers and sisters to one another, and that we are each other's responsibility to love and to care. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here this evening.